community. He was Ronald Reagan's first U.S. attorney and then was a two-term attorney general of South Carolina and really made a, made a name for himself um, prosecuting child predators, domestic abusers, and drug dealers, putting away bad guys. We appreciate his efforts there. He was elected lieutenant governor and then ascended to governor when Governor Haley left to become ambassador to the UN. You know, Governor McMaster's, again, no stranger to any of us, and we appreciate what he's doing for the business community. Governor Haley worked on recruiting jobs, but I can tell you there's been no drop-off since Governor McMaster showed up. Help me welcome Governor Henry McMaster. I'm delighted to be here, and, and that's right, I tell you, there, we got more people coming by the office from all over the world. I had to get a quick map just to be able to find the, the places that they're coming from. But they're coming from China, they're coming from Korea, coming from Japan, and all every place, Sweden, every place in between. And it's because they come in and, and because they have discovered what we've known all along, and that is we're living in paradise. There's no place better to live than South Carolina. And everybody is saying that they, they've done studies, they've watched the trends, and that everything is pointing, it's always pointing close to the coast. Because this is where it's warm in the wintertime. And it says we've invented air conditioning, that changes everything. And everybody can get here on the state highways. It really is a remarkable shift of great recognition that's going on, and that means that we're going right straight to the top. The, the people are coming from everywhere. The big businesses, small business, people returning home, people who left generations ago, they're coming back, they realize that they want to explore their roots and they want to be a part of, of what we have here. So it's, it's, uh, it's great to be the governor of this wonderful state. And I, I'll tell you, having, having uh, run in primaries and won and lost in general elections and won and lost and having won with having run with no opposition. Of course, you always win that. But I tell you, ascending, that's the way to do the best. That's, 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 get there uh, ahead of schedule and under budget, and it's just terrific. Y'all might have heard me tell this story, but uh, I was on the way up to the Republican National Convention a few months ago, and I was saying to Peggy on the way, I said, Peggy, did you have your wildest dreams? See me in your wildest dreams. See me at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland, Ohio, making a nominating speech for Donald Trump for president. She said, Henry, I hate to tell you, but I've never seen you in any of my wildest dreams. <laughs> 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 I tell you, we ought to be laughing. We ought to be in a great mood because everything good is coming to South Carolina. If we can keep the regulations down. I issued an executive order the other day doing, doing that, urging all the agencies, requiring those that I have some say-so in, and urging those that I don't, to keep the regulations down. Go back and look and find those that, that are uh, counterproductive, find those that are out of date, find those that are unnecessary, and let's get them off the books. If we need to have new ones, let's be sure that they will touch only those things that they're supposed to touch. These unnecessary regulations constrain you. So on that point, I'd ask you, you work in that arena and you run across these things. If you know of something that needs to be changed, something that needs to be looked at, let us know. We will set up a system where people can do that on the, on the internet, where there's someone sitting at their desk in their office can send it in to us and we'll examine it and see what we need to do. But it's very important that we maintain that business climate. That's one reason these people from all over the world who could go anywhere in the world, these big companies, they got plenty of money, they can go anywhere. They study where they want to go. They're all coming to South Carolina because of a tremendous business climate, as well as the fact that I mentioned we're in paradise. We got the ocean on one end, with beautiful grand strands, second to none, beaches and history go all the way back, mountains on the other end, best people in the whole world. My friends come in from all over the place and they say, I can always tell when I'm in South Carolina. I don't have to look at a map, I don't have to see a sign. I know when I'm there. I say, how do you know? I say, well, when I sit down for breakfast in the morning and between ordering my meal and getting my bill, the waitress will call, call me honey, sweetie, darling, and dear. I know I'm in South Carolina because this is a friendly place. That's one of the things we have going for. Here are a few more. Three major research universities that collaborate not only with each other, but also with the private sector. These public-private partnerships, all these big companies especially, 
want to have some connection with a research university. They want to have one of their people to maybe teach. They want people, young people, to be coming in and getting a, a head start working in their businesses. And of course, we got MUSC in Charleston, USC here in Clemson in the upstate. So we got it covered. Also, a magnificent uh, technical college system that's just getting even better. And Red ESC is a part of that. You know, that's something that is funded with it actually fits inside the technical education system that is for a particular business if they if a particular sort of business needs help and you tell tell us and we can provide that sort of uh, definition within one of the technical college systems for small companies as well as big companies as well as those that are coming. Also we got plenty of electric power, we got plenty of water, plenty of uh, clean water. And one of the best things that we have also is that port. Port is a four-letter word, P-O-R-T, but you actually spell it five letters, M-O-N-E-Y. <laughs> the house is getting deeper. We got to hurry. We got to get some more money from uh, the, the, from, from Washington to be sure. We got 50 million that we need right now. We've already wisely put up, put aside about 300 million. We're going to 52 feet. That means these big post town back ships, and they are huge. They dwarf the ones that are out there now. Those are more big than anything else. They can be coming here and they can have them going in and out at the same time, 24 hours a day, night or day. The Port of Charleston and the Port of New York, New Jersey in about 15 years will be the two dominant ports on the Atlantic coast. And what do we have that they don't have? We have one inland port already and we just started on another. The inland port is actually a railroad. Gulf of Southern runs from various parts of the country, comes down through Greer, crosses I-85 and goes to Charleston. Course they go both ways. Well, we built a little spot there in Greer. It's concrete, got uh, storage buildings, a ramp, North and Southern built their part. So what do they do? A trucker can, can come from either way on 80, I-85, I-85, stop there, unload or load, whichever way they're going. Leave their stuff there, it goes on the train right away, and that goes overnight down to Charleston. The next morning, they bring, bring stuff back. What's that do? That saves that truck company, that truck driver, that saves our roads, a 400 mile trip and a whole lot of time. Same thing will happen with I-95. CSX, it's, it's good, it's competition. You got Norfolk Southern coming this way, CSX coming this way. That'll be going up through Dillon County where they really do need a little bit of exposure. And they have some land for these companies that want to set up and want to expand and want to put part of the business there. But that'll be doing the same thing with I-95. We're the only state in the country that's got a good inland port and the only one in the country also is going to have two inland ports. And that port just opens us up to the whole world. And it could, all kinds of stuff goes in and out of that port. Did y'all know that BMW make, produces, manufactures more cars, and I think they have about 16 or 18 sites, I think. More of them are made in Greer, South Carolina, than any place in the world. And did you know how often one rolls off the assembly line? A brand new BMW. And by the way, they don't make them until somebody's ordered them. And they'll make them if you want a pink one with red stripes or blue and turquoise <laughs> interior, whatever you want. You order it and they'll make them. And you can watch it go down the assembly line. In fact, people come in up there and they'll, they'll order a car. They'll come in to pick it up, to finish up with the order, and then drive it out the next day. It's remarkable. How often does a new BMW roll off the assembly line? Every 61.7 seconds. Oh. As some folks used to say, that's cooking with gas. That's, <laughs> that's getting it done. And uh, we've got a lot of those kind of things going on. And every time you have a big business like that come in, that means that all kind of other businesses will have more and more work. So as we, as we work to expand, as we work to bring them in, as we show a, a happy people, uh, it, uh, it, it lends greatly to the strength of our state. I've learned in the spots that I've been in that if people have jobs that they like, if they have work that they, they want to go to, where they can make a decent living, they don't have to be millionaires. Everybody doesn't need to be a millionaire. We got a, almost a billionaire that was working at Morgan Stanley or some of these other companies y'all right, might know. He's not doing any more of that. What he wants to do is coach football, and he's doing it at Coastal Carolina. Did y'all know that? Yeah, I can't remember his name, Vogel or something like that. He's a great joke, something. He's a terrific fellow. Money's not everything, but it is a lot. You got to have a job. But when people have work, when people have 
interesting thing when they're pursuing their dreams and all of that and they're bringing home money to, to feed their families, to buy an automobile, to buy a house, all those kind of things. What happens? And I've seen it myself. The crime rate goes down, drug usage goes down, marriages go up, divorces go down, criminal domestic violence will just wither and, and almost disappear. Anytime you have a community where you have that sort of prosperity turning up, that's what happens. And that's what's coming to South Carolina. So I want to thank you for, for what you're doing, because it's, it's the people of this state that make a difference. We've got, we're in paradise, and that was here when we got here. We've been here forever, been here a long time. We haven't missed it up yet, and that's good. But it's the people that make the difference. It's the people that, that build the institutions, that have the spirit, that take the risks, that get involved, and raise the children, and we are, we're right at the, the top of that game. What we have to do, as I see it, is we have to be sure right now that we outrun the competition. The competition in Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, all these states where the sun shines a whole lot. That's what people are looking for. They're looking for that population growth. So we, we really do have it all. So I want to thank all of you. Thank you for having me, having me here today. And yeah, I shouldn't read you got it. Yeah, you got it. Got something else you're gonna do here today. <laughs> strong people who were willing to stand tall and, and work and help the community. And there's one of them that's here today who has stood as tall as anyone, helping with Boy Scouts, all sorts of community agencies, and his work and has produced, has helped produce the business climate that we have today, as have many of you here have done that. Some of you just starting out, you'll be able to build. Some of the older ones have done it, you're still doing it. And I appreciate it, so does the whole state. There's one man I'd like to recognize today that he's done it all. That is, the Small Business Association the administration has meant a prosperity to thousands and thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of families. And also has been an exemplary role model for the young people. And I've had the pleasure of meeting when I first started practicing law way back in 1973. And that is it. If you come up, you come up please. Yeah. Thank you. 